Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for GRE. We have been solving GRE math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the revised GRE. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. Make sure it's the second edition that you purchase. The problem that we are about to solve is the one that you will find on page number 156. Please turn to it. Page number 156, the very first problem that you see there, problem number 3. These problems that you see on page number 156 are the exact same problem that appeared on the exact same page number in the original version, uh, in, in, the, in the first edition of the revised GRE, the book that I'm holding in my hand here. I have already solved every single math problem from this book. We're just redoing them at a little, at a little bit of a faster pace. So if you need the if you need the help uh, if you if you need to look at the solution in a little bit more in depth uh, then you can always go back to the original video which is day number 53 let's do it this problem that we're doing here we have already solved it on day number 53 and here i'm just, just going to do it a little, little bit of a faster pace we're given two quantities here column a column b 3 raised to x plus 1 versus 4 is to x and we are told that x is an integer x x we are told x is an integer greater than 1 x cannot be 1 they are not telling us simply that x is a positive integer in which case x equals to 1 would have been allowed x has to be more than 1 so that's all we're going to do. It's very straightforward, very simple. All we're going to do is plug in numbers for x, 2, 3, 4, whatever we have to do. And we're just going to keep on going and see what happens. I don't know how many times we'll have to try. Maybe try two times, maybe try three times. And if you find a contradiction, we're done. That's all. And after trying three or four times, if you don't find any contradiction, if you keep getting the same answer, then that's what the answer is. Let's see what happens. Let's plug in. Let's plug in x equals to 2. If we plug in x equal to 2, here we get 3 raised to 2 plus 1, which is 3 raised to 3, which is 27. And here we get 4 raised to 2, which is 16. 27 versus 16, the answer so far is A. Let's plug in. Let's plug in x equal to 3. Okay, let's plug in x equal to 3. If we plug in x equal to 3, we're going to end up with 3 raised to 3 plus 1, which is same as 3 raised to 4, which is going to be... which is just going to be 3 times this amount, which is 81, 3 raised to 4. And here, when x is equal to 3, this is going to be times 4, which is 64, and this is our 4 raised to 3, because x is 3. Again, the answer is A, because we have 81 versus 64. Let's go one more round. Let's plug in x equals to 4. If we plug in x equals to 4, we're going to have to multiply this by 3, because we're going now 3 raised to 5, because it's 4 plus 1, 3 raised to 5, which is going to be 81 times 3, 1 times 3 is 3, and then we get 24. Let's see what happens here. Multiply 64 by 4, and that will give us 4 raised to 4, which is simply 4 times 4 is 16, carry 1. 24 and 25, so we get 25. There you go, 256 versus 243. Now the answer is B. Now the answer is B. Before it was 1, we found our contradiction and that's it. First two, In the first two cases, we found the answer of A. Third time around, we got the answer of B. That's it, we're done. Therefore, the correct answer is D. Therefore, the correct answer is D. Now, believe it or not, when this question appeared in the real GRE, 80% of people missed it. 80% got it wrong. Only fifth of the population was able to figure out the right answer. And there is one very simple reason for it. They stop after two tries. You must keep on going. Either they stop after two tries or they're not paying attention here and they don't, they don't understand that x, x equal to 1 is not allowed. You got to keep on going. What would have happened if you put in x equal to 1? We would have had a 9 here, we would have had a 4 here. You see? You see here, if you put in x equal to 1, watch what happens. If you put in x equal to 1 here, 1 plus 1 is 2, 3 squared is 9, and then here we have 4. So here we would have had 9 versus 4, the answer would have been A, 
Actually, that not that would not have changed anything. That's what maybe that's what it is. They put in one hair, they go three times, and they stop. We not allowed one. You got to keep on going until something happens. Do you understand? And of course, if nothing happens after three or four tries, then that's what the answer is. But you got to go at least three times. That's it. You're done. The answer is D. Eighty percent of people miss this question. If you want to watch the original video, uh, this this problem, uh, the problem that we just did, appeared in this this book here, the tenth edition of the. GRE, the old GRE, and if you're interested in watching the original video, you will find that. Just type in quantitative, quantitative comparison. Just type in quantitative comparison, day 120. Day 120, and you will find all of my videos of all the quantitative comparison questions out of this book here. If you want, if you're interested in practicing. Uh, having, having more practice on the quantitative to comparison questions because there aren't there aren't many of them in the new book and they're all here it has seven exams each exam has about 30 not about 30 each exam has 30 quantitative comparison questions there are 210 quantitative comparison questions in this book and I have done every single one of them just type in day 120 and you will find this particular question let's keep on going then the next problem that they give us again it's based on the old questions that appeared in the old exam, but here they have modified it a little bit. So what I'm going to do here again is to do the problem as it appears in its original version, and then we'll do it in the modified version that we see in there, in, in front of you there, problem number four. I'm going to change the marker. Just give me one second, I'm still here. Again, the original problem, that, 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 uh, as it appeared in the original exam, it looks something like this. Column A, we were told area of, oh, I haven't written problem yet. We are told that the length of a rectangle, the length of a rectangle, is increased by P percent and we are told that its width its width is decreased by P percent so we are told that we have a rectangle and we are increasing this length by P percent, certain percentage, and we are decreasing its width by the same percentage. The question simply is this. Column A, we were told area of the new rectangle if P is 10. And column B, area of the new rectangle if P is 20. Again, if you're interested in watching the original solution to this problem, you will find this thing on day number 108. Day number 108, as I said, this problem appeared in the old GRE on the 10th edition that, I'm going, that I showed you before on page 291, number 15. One more time, I'm going to show you here the old GRE book, which has uh, seven exams in this, 10th edition it is called. In this book, this question that you see on the blackboard in its original version appeared on page number 291. What I want you to do right now is to pause the video. I want you to pause the video and solve this question yourself. Do not continue watching it. Pause it, solve it yourself, and once you have the solution, then I want you to resume the video and then compare the work that we're going to do together versus the work that you that you that you did yourself. Okay, I'm gonna give you five seconds to pause and then pause just that and see what happens. There we go. So the key thing to do here is to make up our rectangle. We're gonna make up our rectangle. We're gonna increase the uh, we're gonna increase the length by p percent, the length by p percent and we're gonna decrease the width by p percent. So here is our original rectangle here. 
let's make it one, 100 by 1000 by one by 100 by one why 100 by 1000 because we are dealing with percentages and when you're dealing with percentages the good numbers to plug in are 100 and multiples of 100 so that's what I'm going to do here our, re our original rectangle we are assuming is 100 by 1000 well in that case our new rectangle is going to be in this case our new rectangle is going to be the area of the new rectangle if p is 10 p is 10 which means we are told that the length is increased by 10 percent if you increase the length by 10 percent 10 percent of 1000 is 100 so it becomes 1100 and this is become, going to become 90 you're going to decrease the width by 10%, you're going to increase the length by 10%, so it's 90 by 1100. And here, it's the same exact idea, it's going to become 1200, because we are increasing the length by 20%, and we're decreasing the width by 80%, uh, by 20%, so it becomes 80. That's it. Basically, essentially, what we're being asked here is to compare the area of this guy versus the area of that guy, which is very straightforward, very simple to do. I'm going to do it up here so you can see it. Here's our column A. Here's our column B, 90 times 100, or rather 90 times 1100 versus 80 times 1200. Now watch what happens, watch what happens. Let's divide both sides, I don't like this 1100. Let's divide both sides by 100, let's divide both columns by 100. If you divide both columns over 100, these two drops are going to drop out from here, these two drops are going to drop out from there. Let's divide both columns one more time by 10. If you divide both columns one more time by 10, this 0 will drop out, this 0 will drop out. Essentially, we're being asked to compare 9 times 11, which is 99, and 8 times 12, which is, well, I don't know what 8 times 12 is, I know 10, uh, 10 8s are 80, 80 plus 16 is going to be 96. There you go, the answer is 8, because 99 is bigger than 96. That's it, we are done. That's it, we are done. And yet, and yet, when this question was given in the real exam, as this, this question in the original version, as you see here, which appeared on page 291 as number 15, when it appeared in its original version in the original exam, only 32% of the people got it right. Only 32 people got it, 32 percent got it right. Two-thirds of the people who took the exam missed it because they are trying to solve this question algebraically. They are trying to solve this question in a classical way, traditional way, orthodox way, academic way, mathematical way. Don't do that. Make up numbers, plug in numbers, plug in smart numbers. The smart numbers when you are dealing with percentages are hundreds and multiples of 100, which is why the rectangle that we made up was 100 by 1000. When it's 100 by 1000, doing the percentage is very simple. That's it. Now let's do the problem that appears in front of us. Problem number four, and you will see that the problem number four is very similar. There is nothing in it. It's very similar. They're just being cute. So here's what it is. We have three rectangles here. We are told we have three rectangles A, B, and C. We are told. Here, in this particular problem, here, rectangle C is the point of reference. Rect rectangle C is the point of reference. Do you understand? So, let's, let's draw our point of reference, rectangle C. And that's going to be our point of reference. Again, since it's a point of reference, let's make it 100 by 1000. Let's look at column A. And column B. Let me read the question as it appeared in the in the book itself because I'm right now going. It says A, B, C are the three rectangles. There you go. A, B, C. We have three rectangles. A, B, C. It goes on to say that the length and the width of the rectangle A are 10% greater and 10% less. All right. Length and the width of rectangle A are 10% greater and 10% less. All right. Fine. So here is our rectangle A. It's the exact same thing as before. Nothing has changed. They're doing the exact same problem, they're just presenting it in a little bit different way. So the length is 10% more, which is going to be 1100. The width is 10% less, which is going to be 90. And then they go on to say, then they go on to say, one more time, I'm going to read the second sentence. It says, the length and the width of rectangle A are 10% greater and 10% less, respectively. 
than the length and the width of the rectangle C. Okay, so far so good. This is our rectangle C right here, the point of reference. The length and the width of rectangle B, they go on to tell us, are 20% greater and 20% less respectively than the length and the width of the rectangle C, which is again rectangle C, the point of reference. And the new one is going to be 20% more and 20% less. So here's our rectangle B. Here's our rectangle B. Oh Jesus, that's not a very nice looking rectangle, is it? The length is 20% more, so it's going to be 1200. The width is 20% less, so it's going to be 80. It's the exact same problem. That's it, we just did that. There's no need to redo it. It's just 90, 90 times 1100, 90 times 1100 versus 80 times 1200, 80 times 1200. It should take no more than a few seconds to realize that if you were to divide both columns by 100, and these two zeros will drop out. If you were to divide both columns by 10 one more time, this zero will drop out again. And then 9 times 11 is 99, and 8 times 12 is 96, and therefore the answer is A. Well, that's it. I will see you tomorrow, where we will continue with problem number 5 and 6. Okay? But for, to, for, but for today, we are done. That's all she wrote. Bye now.